When we look up the definition of dominant, it means most important, powerful, or influential. And those three words could definitely describe Ray Lewis. But to be the most dominant player on your team in a year, that's cool. That's great. Uh, to be the most dominant player on your team in the past five years, hey, that's even better. To be the most dominant player uh, on your team uh, in your era, that's even more amazing. But this right here, to be the most dominant player this century, and this was voted on by fans, by the way, but to be the voted the most dominant player this century, you know how long a century is? That's a hundred years, unless I'm mistaken. But to be voted the most dominant player in the past 100 years, that says a lot. And that shows a lot of people have a lot of respect for you. Because y'all know fans. Fans can be really nasty. Fans can be just harsh. They can be rough. But despite how many fans may feel about Ray Lewis, the respect is there. Especially for the on-field work that he did and put in. The respect that has to be there because Ray Lewis, he commanded it. He earned it. So on, on this list, with, with him to, to, to go from 175 players that were included in the voting, uh, he made it through 175 players, all down to one. It was Ray Lewis. And when you think about it, like th th think, think about the definition, again, of dominance. Uh, most important, powerful, influential. That's Ray Lewis in a nutshell. And see, when you think about his impact, you can even, obviously on the football field, he was like that. Defensive player of the year, two-time Super Bowl champion, so many accolades, got all the sacks, picks, forced fumbles, big hits, big plays. We done seen it all. And the same thing I always say about Eric Reed. Terrell Suggs, too, say it about Ray Lewis. Like, hey, you can watch highlights, and highlights are great. And highlights will do it justice, but there was nothing. Nothing like watching a game while it was on TV or if you were there in person, there was nothing like seeing it live. Because when Ray Lewis was on that field, oh man, you just knew. You just knew like the defense. <laughs> they were going to make some plays, man. Whether it was Ray Lewis himself or somebody around, they were going to make some plays. And Ray Lewis, he made plenty of plays over the years, man. I always say my favorite play came when the Ravens were playing the Chargers and it was fourth and one. Chargers have been driving down the field. Game is on the line. If they get the first down, they got a shot to go for a touchdown. But if they don't, game is over. Ravens win. It's an away game. Fourth and one. Ray Lewis times it perfectly. The Chargers do a handoff to Darren Sproles. Ray Lewis times it perfectly right up the gut through the middle. Hits him in the backfield, game over. That, that was the moment for me right there. And I know there are plenty of other moments that you could choose from, but that right there was my favorite Ray Lewis moment. Because it showed not only his dominance, his physical dominance, but it showed the mental dominance. And in order, in order to be dominant in the NFL, you got to have both. You, you have to. There is no way that you can just get by with physicality alone. Because the NFL is more mental than it is physical. So you got to have the smarts, too. You can't just be all brawn, be all big and strong, and, okay, this is going to get me by. No, 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 my friend. It's a lot more than that. And Ray Lewis, obviously, a student of the game. Like, somebody commented the other day on one of the videos. They were talking about somebody from UM. And they're like, man, I miss them uh, University of Miami boys because the way that they watch film, they watch film like they were watching movies. They really dissected it. They really dove into it. They did their homework and extra credit. And you know, like, I would always love just listening to Ray Lewis talk about football. I would love hearing him talk about football because you could tell he was not only a student of the game, but he appreciated it. He appreciated all the extra stuff that came with it. He appreciated diving into film, doing research, learning about this quarterback, what they like to do, what they don't like to do. He learned about tendencies and all that, reading offense. He, he loved doing all of that stuff. And for him to be dominant, like for somebody to be considered dominant, you can't just talk the talk. <laughs> that ain't going to work, my friend. You can't just talk the talk. You got to be able to walk it. You got to be able to deliver, too. So Ray Lewis, the on-field dominance was there, but then when you also think about it, think about 
uh, just what he did for people off the field. Obviously, the influence was there. There's so many people, even till this day, they will they need a little extra motivation. They will go look up a Ray Lewis speech. They'll go look up Ray Lewis talk, whether he was talking to the Ravens, whether he was talking to a high school team, whether he was talking to whoever he was talking to, they will go look up a Ray Lewis speech. I'm sure a lot of y'all have done that before too. There was even one point, it was years ago. I'm sure I'm way behind now, but there was one point where I, I probably had watched every single Ray Lewis speech that was on YouTube. This was years ago, but like, because it, it, when you would watch it, it'd be like, whoa, all right. But when you think about Ray Lewis, too, another thing you think about is how he made people around him better and provided opportunities for people around him, too. That's what dominant people do. Especially dominant football players They can make you look better Whether you're a player or Whether you're a coach Because think about players Like think about how many linebackers Lined up next to Ray Lewis And they cashed in Because a lot of teams were like Look, uh, the Ravens, they keeping Ray Lewis Even though that one year I almost thought he was going to go to the Cowboys or the Broncos I was really scared when he was in free agency I said, oh, no, we better lose Ray Ray But anyway, he stayed um, But Think about all these linebackers that line up next to Ray Lewis and they went on and they got paid. Because teams were like, oh, they keeping Ray Lewis, that, uh, we can go after the other guy next to him. He's probably really good, huh? Remember Danelle Ellaby? I love Danelle Ellaby too. I really liked him a lot. Remember Adelius Thomas? Oh, Adelius Thomas was nice, man. Remember Ed Hartwell? Remember um, Bart Scott? Bart Scott. And those guys were cool. Now, they, they, they were nice because Danielle Ellaby, I think he got signed by the Saints. Bart Scott, obviously, by the Jets. Adelia Thomas by the Patriots. Uh, Ed Hartwell by the Falcons, right? But, and there were, there were plenty of others, too. There were plenty of others. But then it went further beyond that because it went to coaching, coaching staff, too. Because Ray Lewis' dominance, it impacted everybody on every single level. Because with Ray Lewis, like, remember, like, Marvin Lewis, he was on the Ravens staff, uh, Jack Del Rio, and there's plenty of other guys. They went on to not just be position coaches. It ain't nothing wrong with being a position coach. But these guys were going to become defensive coordinators and, and, and then head coaches. Because some of them had already been defensive coordinators with the Baltimore Ravens. And they coached Ray Lewis. So teams saw that. Like, oh, you, oh, you coach Ray Lewis? Oh, this is a, okay, you know what? Let's hire you. And let's learn what you learned from him. And what did you learn from coaching him? I'm sure you, you taught him some stuff too now. But what did you get from him? The man was crazy, man. He, he, he was just crazy good. And then to think about how much it takes to be a consistent player in the NFL. Because remember, only 1% of people make it to the NFL. But then on top of that, what makes it even harder, people don't last. I think the average career in the NFL is like three years. It's three years. Well, Ray Lewis played like 16, 17 years. I think 16. So with him playing all these years in the league, but remaining such a great player, that says a lot, man. Not everybody can do that. So I, I, I got to give kudos to Ray Lewis and kudos to the people who uh, voted him as the most dominant player, non-QB, of the last century Because it just It makes sense so Team Keep It Clean I love y'all Appreciate y'all Hey This is the week Football is starting this week One week from now We'll be able to see the Ravens play But in just Four days from now We'll see our first Regular season game Of the 2023 season When the Chiefs play The Lions So we made it y'all We made it It's been a long off season But we done got through it man and it went by faster than ever. And we here now. So y'all team keep it clean. Make sure you subscribe because we're going to have a lot of fun on here. Like we do every year. If you're new here, thank you. If you're old here, thank you. Thank you regardless. Subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on. You can leave a like on the video. Because again, hopefully, hopefully you like what you saw. But let's have a great year, y'all. I appreciate you. Looking forward to a lot of fun. Shout out to Ray Lewis for his domination. We out.